Back again with the second video on the eBay scraping. In this one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be basically storing our searches to a text file and then reading them. And so you can see on the left here what I have. It just says computer comma 25. And so that's going to be my first search and it's going to be looking for computers. And then what I've done is I made it so that the max price is 25. So I made multiple changes in this code. I'm just going to run it so you can see what it does and then we will work from there. So you can see right now it's doing the same thing from the last one but this time it's looking for computer and then it finds the prices and it looks at all the ones under $25 and marked as new because that's what we've done in the previous one. And so this is the finished code. I'm going to swap over back to the original code so we can show exactly what it is going to look like when we're done. So I'm just going to swap that over there, plop this over here. And so if you look at our old one, what we did is we just had this statically defined. So it was just, we're looking at the one thing, the E52620. This is our search term. We plug it in down here and that's all we're doing really. And then if we want to make a second search, we have to swap it out. We type it in again and then we um, hit run. And then if we want to make another search, then we have to do it again. And so that's kind of a hassle because that means that if we have lots of things that we want to look for, we have to sit there and type each one in one at a time, which if we're doing that, we might as well just look directly on eBay. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a file which is going to store all of our searches. So if we want to call all of our searches that we've saved up over time, we can just do that. So what you're going to want to do is you go to whatever directory you have your file in and then you right click and you do new and then text document and it might look a little bit different for you if you don't have notepad plus plus it might just show the normal notepad icon but it is the one that's marked text document so just create one of those I've already done that and so what you're going to want to do is either in notepad plus plus or notepad you're going to want to um, save the file as whatever you want to save the file as. I put it as searches.txt. And then what you're going to want to do is you can put in computer, laptop, whatever, whatever you want inside of there. Some specific Nike shoes or something like that. And then if you want, you can add in this second parameter, but you don't have to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start us off without it, so let's just start with computer. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this search term variable. And we are going to do, what we're going to do right here is we are going to open this file. And so what we're doing here is we do with open searches.txt and then we tell it that we want to do it in the read and then we say what we want to open it as we open it as a search file and then what we do is we set it as a variable the part that we read so what I'm doing here is I'm reading lines and that means that it's going to read each one line by line. So if we want a second search, we can do laptop. And then it's just going to read each different line as a separate variable. So that's all we need right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through the list. So for item in searches, hang on, I'm going to... I'm going to go back one step just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to print out searches to show that it is open the file and it's got some text in there already. So I hit control B and I haven't defined search term. We'll ignore that for now. If you look up here, it shows that it's got computer 25 in a list like that. So that's good. Hang on. Let me, let me save that. I'm going to run this again 
And what you're going to see is we've got computer, and then the next item in the list is laptop. And it's got the um, new line um, symbol, but you can just ignore that for now. It'll, it'll go away when we specifically select that. So um, from there, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to iterate through all of those items. So if, it, if you've got a list of um, computer and laptop, it's going to do computer, then laptop, then whatever's next. So it's going to make a search for each one separately, one at a time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define a variable as Hang on. I'm looking at the finished code. I'm trying to not do it fully complete yet. Let's just do four item in searches for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and indent it one spot. And what we're going to plug in here is item. And then we actually have to unindent these, otherwise it puts a tab in between each one. Hang on, let me do this like that. And then, basically what it's going to do is in the previous one we had only defined the one um, search term. So we were only looking for E52620, but if you look now, it's going to iterate through the searches and it's going to plug each one. So for us, it's going to plug in computer, then it's going to plug in laptop, and it's going to do that same request we were doing before. So if I hit Control B, fingers crossed this works, you can see that at the top section, it's got all this stuff mentioning computers. And if you look at the bottom, all of this is laptop luggage, laptop, blah, blah, blah. So it did both of the searches correctly, so that's exactly what we're looking for. But what I'm going to add in is if we do, like I showed before, comma 25, comma 50, or something like that, then we can add an additional filter. So instead of just having the max price permanently set at 500, we can do our own max price that we've defined. And we're going to define that up here. And so what we're going to do is we do we're going to split this on the comma. So if you look at this, before the comma is computer, after the comma is 25. So we just want to split it up and we'll take computer first and then we'll take 25 after. And so what we're going to do is item dot split and we're going to split it on the comma. And then for the search we're taking the first part. So that's computer. And then for max price we're going to take the second part which is the 25 or the 50 or whatever so you can see that right now we're going to plug in max price and we're also going to plug in the item and so if we run that if we figure out what the error is real fast List, oh, we have to we have to save this. That's our problem. Run this again, and you can see it did it again, and it's got the additional price filtering in there, which is exactly what we want. So now, what I am going to do is one additional step, because actually it's splitting on the comma, which means we have space twenty five which works, but it's probably better if what we do is replace the comma, or the space rather, 
with the percent sign 20 because that's that's basically filling in the space instead of passing in the space in the website request we're setting in um, um, percent sign 20 which is the more proper way to do it and so if we run that you can see that it's pretty much the same thing but it's just instead of having random spaces in the URL I'll show print URL print URL so if we look all the way up here you can see where's the max price it actually has a space in here in between the value and the 25 and down here too and that's not really what we want we want it to be like this where it's percent 20 25 because that's actually how um, how eBay handles it themselves so we want to do it beforehand but other than that that's pretty much all for today's video I showed basically the full process of you can add in as many searches as you want in here quickly and so you could just do phone 25 shoes 100 and you can just type those in, save them for later, and then run it whenever you want. In the next video, we're going to be covering how to actually um, send an email to yourself given this data so you can make it run continuously, maybe every 15 minutes or something like that. It's rate limited, so you can't just be pinging it constantly, but you could have it run every 15 minutes and then it will send an email if an item pops up that matches your criteria. And last thing I'm going to cover, sorry if I'm droning on, is um, you can add additional arguments here basically. So if you want to change, sometimes you want new items, sometimes you want used items, you could add a third argument here and you could type in used. And then you just sit here and you do the split and then you add that in. But other than that, thank you. That is it.